What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down how wide receivers can run faster routes. So I hope this video helps you guys out. Hope it could teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you would like to know the daily things you should be doing in the gym to improve your speed, your explosiveness, your power, your balance, check out that very first link in the description below for our 16-week wide receiver gym workout plan. What you'll get access to is a four-month daily workout split where we break it down Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, etc., with exact exercises sets and reps, and then picture examples of each exercise as well. So check out that very first link below, fellas, if you're interested in that. Let's get started. So first thing that's going to make you a faster route runner is knowing how to strike the ground with your cut foot. So we're looking at this wheel route here from Justin Jefferson. He ends up catching this thing. I know the clip cuts off, but I really wanted you to see his footwork off the edge. So he comes off of here and he does this release where he's attacking the DB's leverage. DB is lined up inside shade, and we're trying to threaten him to the inside. So if he's inside shade and we're trying to get him to bite to the inside move, at the end of the day, when we try to get him to bite and I'm trying to slip outside, I have to make sure I'm doing it fast, right? I have to get him to try to commit. I have to try to get him to jump, but I have to get out of this cut fast to be able to get up into the route, whether that's a fade route, a wheel route like so, an out route, whatever it is. So oftentimes when guys try to sell and they try to get this DB to jump, they will open up their toe and that sacrifices a ton of speed. So they try to sell, you know, they really try to throw their hip into the break, but this toe, instead of pointing straight forward, will point almost open towards the side. Now, the reason why that's going to make you lose speed, the reason why that's a mistake that wide receivers will make is when your toe points open to the left and your hips point open towards the left, you physically cannot get out of the break. Anytime that we are throwing a release, anytime that we are throwing a cut, you want to try to keep your toes forward or maybe slightly open so the weight of your body can be on the inside part of your foot. Because when that weight of your body is on that inside part of your foot, or I would say the middle part of your foot, like the ball of your foot, you can actually push. And that push off of that cut is what gives guys so much more speed and so much more explosion out of their releases. So many people try to over exaggerate and sell. They'll reach outside their frame. They think that me stepping and really like opening up my hip and everything to the outside will get him to jump. And it might because that's what a DB's looking at. He's watching my hips. But if I can't get out of the break, that just gives him time to react. So we need to make sure I am throwing my hip to the, I'm throwing my hip out, not opening up my toe and opening my hip to sell this movement. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Jefferson showcasing how that cut can get you faster out of the break with the correct foot strike and with the correct toe placement. Okay, so now next example we're going to talk about here is how you guys can do a proper speed cut at the top of the route. So that speed cut is like that single cut at the break point where you just cut off of one foot. Now, the reason why a lot of people lose explosion on a speed cut is they start to round out of it with their hips and with their shoulders. So for example, like again, and it's the same thing as that press release. Oftentimes, guys will try to get out of the break too fast, try to get up into the route too quickly and don't sell the break enough, but it also sacrifices speed. So think about this. In a man coverage, where's the DB supposed to be looking at? He's supposed to be watching my hips, right? So, so many wide receivers before they end up making a break, they are not confident in that like single cut. They're not comfortable cutting off of one single foot. So this shoulder and that hip start to turn and try to go out of the break early. I call that cheating the route. That will make this cut so much less explosive and you will lose a ton of speed out of the break. Because at the end of the day at the top of the route, and we're going to talk about this later, it's almost like running a 40-yard dash. We're going to show an example of a 40-yard dash and somebody running a route and talk about how that's similar. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but it'll make more sense in a second. But it's like the same idea. At the start of a 40, you're trying to create energy. You're trying to create explosion. So at the top of the route, this cut has got to create energy and explosion to get you out of the break fast so we can widen the distance from the DB. But if your hips and your shoulders are already starting to turn, your body is already starting to turn, that cut when this body is over here is outside of your frame. And when you cut outside of your frame, we lose explosion, we lose power. You've probably seen it before. Guys will come up here and they'll start to reach way out with this cut at the break point. They'll reach to over-exaggerate, they'll drag their back foot, and they take all these extra steps at the break. That's just giving the DB time to recover. So for you guys to have this quick, sudden stick at the top of the route, you have to commit your hips and commit your shoulders to the fade. Not only will that help you sell the route, but that will help you create more explosion with your cuts because the only way you can get out of this cut is by being explosive because you're not rounding it. The cut has to have some explosion. We have to push off of the cut just like the release and you see 
how his toe is not opened up, his hip is not opened up. He's throwing his hip to the inside, but he's keeping that toe forward so he can drive out of there and get some speed out of that speed cut to widen from the DB. That's textbook route running right there. That's exactly how you would want to play this speed cut. So let's play it again full speed one more time. Great job making a move inside, getting skinny, and then cutting off that single foot, still selling the route and getting some explosion. Okay, so let's talk about this 40-yard dash here for a second. So this is one of the things that I think so many wide receivers don't understand. And I love this analogy because everybody understands a 40-yard dash. Everybody always loves to ask, hey, you know, what's an average 40 time for a wide receiver, etc.? You got to think of your routes at the top of the break as a 40-yard dash. So when you're running a 40-yard dash, that first like 5 to 10 yards, and I'm not a speed guy, but I know enough about it to be able to say this, that first 5 to 10 yards is about creating energy. They call that the drive phase, right? That you're trying to be as powerful as possible, stay low, take as big, powerful strides as possible. A lot of times what guys will do is they'll come off of this 40-yard dash and they'll stand straight up and just try to run hard, but that kills their time because they're not creating any energy that leads to acceleration, which is exactly like what a route is. So when he comes out here, that first five yards, you're trying to be powerful. What I equate that to is the cut at the top of the route. When you guys are dropping into a break point, like let's say it's a comeback, when, let's say it's a 15 back to 12 yard comeback. At 15, you were trying to create energy with your hips. You were trying to be low. You were trying to be powerful with your steps because that energy creation will lead to accelerating out of the break. That 15 back to 12 portion that will help you widen from the DB. You cannot get out of that fast if you try to break and just stand up. You have to get low and you have to try to drive with your feet, aka the drive phase of the 40-yard dash because now you see how Jefferson, after that first 5 to 10, he starts to gradually stand up. He's hitting top speed right now. If you just stand up and try to run, you're eventually going to run out of gas. Just like on a comeback, if you try to stand up at the break point, you're going to drift, you're going to take extra steps, and you're not going to have speed out of the break. The break point explodes you out and that's how you have to think of a route so let's go to this next route here so this is a whip route right so on this whip route let's watch it watch how explosive he is at the break and then watch what that does to get him out of the break it accelerates him out of the break that is what we have to focus on with any route so on this whip again he's coming here he's selling the route he's actually running hard but at the break point you see how he doesn't beat the drum right? So many wide receivers have been taught this. At the break point, you want to chop your feet and chop your hands. You want to beat the drum, try to go as fast as we can because it'll help you change direction tightly. But that doesn't create any energy. That's just flat out slow. Yeah, you might make a tight break, but that's not going to create any energy. You being violent and aggressive with your hips and you being powerful, getting low, bringing your chin to your knee. That's the place that I like to be. And having your butt actually drop down puts you in a balanced position so you can decelerate, but also a position of explosion to now where I get into this break. You see how he snaps on his inside foot. He hooks the outside foot around, but because he's a low, because he was violent with his hips, he can actually push off of this foot and get some explosion. He gets some acceleration to widen him from the DB. If he were to just break and it were to just be slow, and let's say he turned his hips and he took about three, four extra steps right there, and I'm not one big guy for steps. It's not about the amount of steps. It's about the amount of time you can eliminate. But if I waste a bunch of time at this break point because I'm not being violent, I'm not getting low enough, all this DB does is recover and make a play, especially at a high level of football. So fellas, let's be violent with my hips. Let's be aggressive. Let's be powerful with my feet to get me into that drive phase so that can lead to that acceleration phase where I'm running out of the break. Great route there. Let's watch the thing again, full speed one more time. Great job emphasizing the violent hip drop to create explosion, which leads to acceleration, which can increase your speed on your routes.